Hello and welcome to IndieCider, where I play indie games and then interview the developer. I'm your host, Ken Gagney, and this week I'm playing Kona by developer Parable, who provided me with this review copy. I'm going to start a new game here of this so-called walking simulator, and I don't mean that term pejoratively. It is a 3D first-person puzzle exploration game set in Canada in the 1970s. There is a third-person omniscient narrator Our who will be sought information for a living. introducing us. That is to say that ever since he returned from Korea, after having served with the armed forces, he had been working as a private investigator in Montreal. William Hamilton, a rich industrialist, had gotten in touch with him regarding a simple vandalism issue. Nothing to write home about. Not worth hiring a private eye either, just so he can drive for hours on rough roads. But that's how it had always been. The client pays, Carl gets it done. He littered. I'm not a fan. All right, so I have some basic controls here. I can uh, look and steer. Can I follow the railroad track? No. But I can't seem to uh, crash my vehicle either, so that's good. And already you can see that this is different from games like Gone Home or Firewatch in that they had set up to meet at the general store. I have a car. Client's business. Well, actually, the entire village had William Hamilton's name written all over it. Here I am, tooling along. And it won't be long before I get out of the vehicle and you'll get to see some of the game's more traditional mechanics. Oh, what's this? When the roads were bad, muddy, or snowed in, it was customary around these parts to close them off. But it was also customary to ignore those signs entirely and drive there anyway. The rest stop. This is where the rest stops. Alright, let's see. What is going on here? Hamilton never mentioned a road blocking barrier. Why was it needed here in the back of beyond? That would, however, be a mystery for another day. Carl had waited long enough for someone to come and raise it. Still not a soul in sight. There was no point in waiting any longer. Carl had to figure this one out by himself. Ah, visit lovely Manistan. The north is swarming with wolves, caribou, bears, partridges, fox, snowy owls, and a pear tree. How lovely. All right. And we have a map here that's roughly the area we'll be exploring throughout this game. Hamilton, no doubt, knew who managed the barrier. Carl wanted to give him a call, but that would have been too easy, though. As sure enough, the... Oh, there's my inventory. The line was acting up. And there's my zoom. There's my crouch. There's my jump. There's my feet. All right, let's go up to that Firewatch Tower. Got an empty bottle. Maybe I can put a fairy in it in case I die later. Do I have a, don't I have a run button? There it is. Whoa, ow. How interesting. Are these the people who played the game before me and did not survive? Maybe not. And up here, what do we find? A chest. Da 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 da. Bolt cutters. And matches, or rather, fire starter. Not the Stephen King novel, however. This is not a game where you just explore the woods and find boxes filled with odd novels. Ravens, which is quite ominous. And Chevy, product placement. Lac Atempiac. I don't speak French. Alas. Alright, let's get this open. Hamilton is waiting for Carl in the general store. It was time for him to get down to business. Bidness. So I gotta get to the general store, so... Can't walk there. Or actually, it seems I can. How far can I go without my truck? Carl, not knowing what lay on the other side of the bridge, needed to make sure he wasn't leaving anything behind. Like his truck. And I'm back at the rest stop. Alright, let's hop in and skedaddle. Better. William Hamilton enjoyed a lavish country house built in the very heart of the northern forests, not too far from here. Vroom! All right. So shortly, this game will get much more the narrative. The populace was divided when it came to the affluent men. 
Some saw a wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others, an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those ones hated him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses, but the last straw was the reopening of a mine, which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialist's house had been a target, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target would become the man himself. Oh god. That was a very narrow road, and that was a bottleneck, and that was a bad place to have an accident. And a few hours later, you find that what has happened while you were unconscious, but it snowed. And this is not some sort of a Silent Hill transformation. Carl needed to get out of there. This is the just what happens in Canada. It snows. And so while I try to keep my character alive, I'm going to be interviewing the community manager from Parable, Jean-Francois Fisset, who is quite familiar with this terrain. So welcome to Kona and this episode of IndieCider. If you want to listen to the audio only, check out IndieCider.net slash Kona. Joining me today is the community manager for Parable, Jean-Francois Fisset. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you, Ken? Wonderful. Thank you. How's the weather up in, is it Quebec? Uh, yeah, uh, right now it's uh, pretty much okay. It's a little cold, but uh, it's, go it's getting warmer than uh, this winter. Because after playing Kona, I have to assume that is just a completely frozen tundra. Is that not correct? <laughs> uh, sometimes it is, but it's not as bad as it looks. Carl it's wondered like how long he would some have to days it's going to be really cold, cold, but some other days it's only snow, but you can manage. So it's not uh, that big, big a deal. <laughs> I love how Kona draws upon your own territory, your own environment, places that you're familiar with. Is Kona based in real places? Are these places that I can go visit? The village itself is fictional, but uh, it's set like 60 miles north of a real town called Shibugemo. Uh, so we were inspired by uh, what we saw uh, in our lives, uh, the places we visited. Uh, so basically, it's fictional, but it's kind of true at the same time. Did you have to do any field research, like going out into places in Canada and saying, oh, I love this cabin, I love this truck, this road, let's make this part of the game? Uh, not really. Uh, most of it was uh, inter internet search, uh, search uh, to be able to uh, be historically uh, accurate. But uh, for most parts, it was like uh, our parents lived in the 70s, so uh, we would ask them for some stuff if we ever need uh, any confirmation uh, and stuff like that. So as for the field search, uh, basically we live this kind of winter, so uh, it's based on our own uh, experience, yeah. That's true. This game is set in the 70s, and it seems like that's before many people at Parable were even, even born, is that right? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think the, the more and was now uh, the oldest one adventures. is uh, from, from the 80s, so yeah, it's before us. <laughs> Why would you choose to set a game in an era that none of you have any first-hand experience with? Uh, basically, uh, because uh, in history, uh, Quebec, uh, in Quebec, in 1970, it was a really uh, important part of our history. It was like uh, when the religion took less plays than before and people were more uh, uh, they could tell their idea uh, with, without uh, being censured and stuff like that and also uh, it was there was uh, this separatism uh, I don't know if you ever heard of that no that doesn't ring a bell okay so uh, basically uh, that's when the movement uh, kind of began uh, when Quebec as a province uh, would want to become its own country. Uh, so that's basically the time when it began. Uh, so we assumed that it was best if we wanted to tell a little bit of our story in a game to go for an era that was really important for uh, all Quebecers. When you were choosing the era, did it have anything to do with the technology of that era? Because it seems like 
Firewatch, Kona, Agatha Christie Mysteries, they all are set before the invention of the cell phone and the public access to the internet. It seems like these kinds of stories would change a lot if you could just pull out your iPhone and look stuff up. I would like to say if I agree with you that it wasn't true, because uh, it's, it's really, I think it's, it's in the game, you want to be in a place that is different than real life. Uh, at least in my opinion. So uh, the fact that you don't have cell phones to help you makes the game a little bit more difficult. And you have to figure out stuff uh, in the game that you wouldn't have to figure out in real life because you have all the stuff to help you. So it kind of hel it kind of helps you to think outside the box, and I think it's it's really important uh, in a game. Uh, not that uh, game with cell phones are not good, but in our kind of games, if we want people to focus on the story, uh, I think it's important to uh, make them really be in the game. It sounds like the game has evolved a lot, not necessarily in its setting, but in its purpose. Do I understand correctly that Kona was originally intended as a snowmobile simulator? <laughs> uh, yeah, basically the what we uh, began with was a whole huge map with little uh, gaps and a snowmobile, and uh, we thought it was all, it was awesome because it's not the kind of game you see every day. So we also wanted to have a story rich game. So we asked one of our friends, with a writer, to help us come up with uh, a, a setting with, a, the had to have been very uh, with a, a good story that could that the revolve blow around had this. Been given before the victim as, even as the game development get, went further, uh, then we the snowmobile take a, took a look, a little less space, and uh, the story took more. So yeah, uh, you're correct. Uh, it began as a <laughs> snowmobile simulator. So the game became something much different but also much larger than you expected and an early version of the game was going to be episodic. Carl Did, felt is the final game episodic? Spine, Are there going to be more Konas? Uh, we're Hamilton expecting to, uh, the we're planning on making four games set in the same universe uh, but they are all standalone titles. Uh, what I mean by that is it's not uh, episodic anymore. Uh, they're the continuity is not guaranteed either, so uh, we have the liberty of uh, going in the same setting uh, as for the place, but uh, if we want to make the game in the 90s or in the 60s, uh, we will feel free to do it because we have different stories to tell. The there will be some links between them, of course, but was not uh, they are not Kona tone. 1, Kona 2, Kona 3, and Kona 4. Carl it's going to be four standalone and unique games. Store with all that their own game Hamilton mechanics, uh, game designs, and uh, stuff like that. Carl could plainly see. The episodic format, though, seems to be very popular and working very well for games like Life is Strange and anything from Telltale, of course. Why did you choose not to go with that format? Because uh, it, it's more because the game became a lot bigger and then uh, we saw how uh, people didn't uh, really like that format that much. Yes, we will buy games like Life is Strange, but for an adventure game, we felt it was more important to go for a standalone than an adventure be because with it makes us make, uh, be able to make a longer game. I, I don't know if my explanation is good, but uh, that's pretty much what I think. And the game that just came out, it's about six hours long? Maintaining uh, yeah, uh, we estimate Carl between three to six hours to training. complete, depending on your play style. Uh, of course, there are many ways to play a lot areas. more. For, uh, for instance, uh, to unlock barriers? achievements, uh, to explore every area once or twice, and stuff like that. So yeah, basically six hours is uh, pretty accurate. accurate. Now, another thing that changed while Kona was in development, which has been for the last couple of years, was the release of Firewatch, which was a very successful Carl indie no game. I was very happy to have played a complete a Let's Play on my YouTube and channel, and I've, I think about the game a lot. In what ways did that game's release and success influence Kona, if at all? Uh, it didn't really... Uh, yeah, it influenced us in a way, like... Uh, when there was some uncertainty about how, uh, if, if we would be successful or not, uh, seeing a game uh, like Firewatch, uh, which is in, an, in some ways similar to ours, 
uh, go out and have that much success uh, kind of confirmed that there was still a lot of players that enjoy this kind of game. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm talking about walking simulators, of course. Uh, so the fact that Firewatch and our games are walking simulators, but with a little more gameplay to them, uh, it's, it helped us have more confident, confidence about uh, when we would release the game, if it would be successful or not. And uh, obviously, we don't have the same success as Firewatch, but it's pretty, uh, it's still pretty successful. Because I couldn't help but wonder at the very first point in the game where I get out of the truck to find the bolt cutters and they're at the top of a Firewatch tower. I wonder <laughs> if that was some sort of a, a nod at that other game. Uh, no, not really. Uh, the tower was already in the game uh, that, before uh, it uh, Firewatch like the uh, came out, so it's pretty much a coincidence. Floor. I would like if, we, more interested in the if I was to say that we didn't have any inspira inspiration from Firewatch, but still, we had a lot of inspiration for a lot of other games. So, yeah. Sure, of course. Now, you use the term walking simulator to describe Kona, and some people use that term negatively or condescendingly. I assume that's not how you're using it, since you're describing your own game. Exactly, because uh, I think that every uh, genre in, uh, in game, as long as uh, developers stay creative, um, every genre is evolving. So uh, what I mean by that is a walking simulator is not anymore, you're not a floating camera anymore. Uh, you are in the center of a story, but you have more and more stuff to do. So it's more, a walking simulator is becoming more and more like uh, games for uh, like Zelda, for instance. Uh, it's not at this point yet, but Carl was uh, no I'm, I believe that walking simulator uh, is used someone. in a negative way, but shouldn't because it's uh, really interesting. And uh, the more creative we become, uh, the more stuff uh, players will be able to enjoy in the walking simulator game. What are some of the other ways that you feel Kona is innovating or pushing forward that walking simulator genre to really make it into something new? Probably in, uh, in a gameplay uh, mechanic kind of way, because uh, when we think about a walking simulator, uh, some games come to mind like Dear Hester and uh, Gone Home and uh, games like that. In those, you were basically living the story and uh, clicking on things, uh, interacting with things to know more and stuff like that. But in Kona, you have that, but you also have encounters. Uh, you have a bit of puzzles to solve uh, and stuff like that. So I believe that it's, it's going further in the walking simulator genre. And uh, I believe it's a really good phenomenon. Excellent. But a chunk of so if like I understand this, correctly, you came, came out of the ground, onto the Kona team about one year into its development. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. And what is it like to come in basically mid-story where they're already, Prince? they've already laid the groundwork, they've already made some very foundational decisions. Was the camera mm -hmm. What was, was it like to already beat? have that trajectory and come in mid-mission? Uh, it was a, a bit, um, a little challenging at first, but then um, the founder of the company is actually my brother, so uh, I always followed uh, the steps uh, during development. Of course, I was not in the team at the time, so it's not the same thing, uh, but I was still kind of there. So when I, when I arrived, uh, it was easier than if I were someone from the outside uh, entirely. The uh, so it was challenging to like um, to, to know what I could tell the community and what I couldn't. But as as All soon as I uh, like he was uh, when I was like two three months in, then everything was fine and uh, uh, the team uh, was very uh, very happy. I was wondering about that. So there is a relation there. Alexander is your brother. Uh, yes. And have you two worked to together before? Uh, no, that's the first time. And uh, actually, uh, when he hired me, I, I told him I didn't want him to hire me because he, uh, I was his brother. Was uh, I wanted him to hire me because I was weird, and uh, that was clear uh, from day one. Yeah. Of course. I mean, that's the only reason anybody should ever be hired, and I applaud yeah. you saying up for that. <laughs> yeah. But I, I still have to ask, what is yep. it... Like, I have three older brothers myself, and I can't imagine working with any of them. 
<laughs> I mean, what is that like? I mean, uh, do you just get on each other's nerves all day? Uh, no, not really. Uh, me and my brother are like, uh, we have 18 months of difference uh, as of our age. Uh, we have the same friends uh, and we always uh, been close. So it's it's kind of easier this way. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know if 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 I were to have what a brother, why I couldn't stand uh, being with uh, for a long period of time. I probably wouldn't even be at Parable, but uh, we have a really good relationship. Oh, I'm so relieved to hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your your the role you were hired to do was community manager. Did you have a say in any of the development? Uh, yeah, when we uh, make some brainstorm, uh, I'm very welcome to uh, give my input, to uh, comment on other yeah, other people's ideas. Uh, so yeah, I am able to uh, to give a, a little thought. Uh, of course, they are not all uh, <laughs> in the game, but uh, that's part of the job. Of course, uh, something like. Kona is a team effort and everybody shares the credit, but I, I have to ask, is, is there anything you can point to in the game and say, I did that or that is because of me? I could say uh, some small stuff I uh, participated, uh, like uh, correcting typos and texts, especially in French, because French is my first language. The, the, th the Carl's thoughts that you see on screen uh, I wasn't the guy who uh, wrote them, but I was the guy who placed them at uh, where they are. So I didn't really uh, participate uh, in the development that much, but uh, as as soon as I could do it, uh, I was uh, more than glad to help. You mentioned French being your first language, and that of course is very common in that part of Canada. Does Kona offer French voice acting? Uh, yeah, actually, the the original version of Kona is in French, uh, so it's Guy Nadon, the narrator uh, in French. Uh, all the uh, if you're able to play the game with French voices and English subtitles, I would suggest you do it. Uh, of course, it's not for everyone. Uh, for instance, uh, when I when I listen to something, when I watch a movie, and I see the subtitles in another language than the one they are actually talking I'm just I just can't do it so <laughs> it's up to each player but yeah the French is the, the original language wow I didn't realize that because voice acting for many games is one of the most expensive parts of the game that can ostensibly be done without so usually when there are cost-cutting measures voice acting is one of the first things to go so for you to have voice acting in two languages more than one language is really quite impressive yeah, uh, the, the fact is uh, we had a pretty uh, big, uh, good deal for English voices and that's the, the voices we went for first uh, because uh, if we want to sell our game internationally, uh, it makes more sense to make it in English first. But all the text were in French, so then we contacted uh, several people that could do the voices in French also. So yeah, the, the cost is uh, a little, it's not cheap, but it's uh, worth it in the end. I noticed that the narration seems to be done by an omniscient narrator. If it's somebody that's in the game, I haven't gotten far enough to meet that person yet. This is as opposed to other games where it's the protagonist, the main character, who's narrating, and you get to hear their thoughts and their words. Can you tell me a little bit about the decision to have a third person be the narrator instead of the protagonist? Uh, yeah, uh, there were. Uh, the first reason was to uh, we wanted to tell the story like you would tell it, uh, tell it uh, near a fire, for instance, uh, at camp. Uh, the second reason is an omniscient narrator knows Carl, more about the environment, the about the area, Any about the era uh, than the, the 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 protagonist itself, himself. So we figured it would make more sense if you were to, for instance, give a hint about something to do next, uh, that it wouldn't come from the protagonist himself because he would be just superhuman. So uh, we figured it would be best to go for an omniscient uh, narrator this way because he's kind of a godlike uh, persona and we feel it makes more sense uh, when you're telling a story. Sure, I can see that. 
let's go back to talking about your job for a little bit. So, although you did participate in the development and creative process, your main title is community manager, which is a title I usually think of when thinking about competitive games like first person shooters or MMOs or the like, where people are actually interacting and competing with each other online, whereas Kona is more of a solitary experience. What does it mean to be a community manager around a game like Kona? Uh, it means, uh, for instance, uh, I manage the Facebook and Twitter pages, but I'll, I also am the, the guy, the developer, who answers everyone uh, in the forums. So whenever a, a player uh, comes, uh, encounters a bug or has a question about uh, whether it should be this or that, uh, if it's uh, in the story, I prefer not to answer, but if it's a bug, I, I want to make sure that this player knows that we, we read his comment and that we're working on fixing things. Uh, so we feel it's even more important this way because, yes, you want to be alone in the game, but when the game doesn't want you to play, it's not, uh, it's not good, so you don't want to be alone if you're stuck in a bug, for instance. So we feel it's really important to communicate with our community. Yeah, it is It is extremely important to communicate with your fans and your gamers, regardless of your genre. But how do you go about building that community in the first place? Like, do, do you, I mean, once you are on Twitter and on Facebook, how do you get people to follow you or even find out about your game? Uh, this one I must uh, give the credit to uh, my brother. Uh, when the uh, Kona, I don't know if you uh, knew that, but it was a, a kick, uh, we had a Kickstarter campaign in uh, 2014, and uh, that's when we began to build the community. And I wasn't there at the, at the time, so uh, basically we built the community during the Kickstarter uh, campaign, and then. We, we assume it's mostly people telling their friends and stuff like that. And uh, as, lo uh, as soon as we uh, made some press releases and stuff like that, people would know about Kona more. They would like our pages and stuff. The and the fact that we interact Carl with uh, everyone is also a, lo a lot more helpful than it, was the than it looks. Uh, because when a friend tells about the game and he tells uh, the community manager uh, speaks to us if uh, if I were if I interact with them the uh, I will be answered so if you right have a bug if your bowl. computer is slow or stuff like that you can ask and you will actually get answered so it's a lot of a lot of factors uh, help the build the community ice. and I think uh, yeah the, most of the, the credit goes to my brother because the, the, the building of the, the first community came from him that's true. The Kona Kickstarter ran in August of 2014. It raised $44,000 Canadian. And I see that one of the reward levels, this is back when the game was thought to be episodic, was that the first episode would come out of in April 2015. Obviously, the full game came out almost two years later. Something Speaking of the community you developed around that Kickstarter, were any of them upset? that the game got postponed by two years? Uh, some of them, but it, was, it wasn't it was really that big of a deal because uh, that's where uh, the community management comes into place. Uh, if you have a delay uh, on a delivery or something like that, uh, but you keep your people informed and you keep answering them, uh, that's where, that's when the, the rage can become more of an understanding. The man grabbed his like, rifle. There were many factors that uh, obviously caused the delays, but if you're upfront with your community, uh, most people will understand and they will not. They know they will get what they paid for eventually. So they don't. They care, but they don't really care that much about the delay. They will uh, stay with us, stay with you, as long as you stay with them. I think that is very important: is transparency and constant communication, because if for even one moment, you don't let people know what's Perhaps going on. If you leave them wondering what you are doing with their money, that is a very easy way to get people to turn on you. So if you are just completely honest and upfront with them, you'll often find that any, as you said, any rage is subsided because they know that you are reliable and trustworthy. Yeah, exactly. And even even if you, they, they are frustrated about the situation, you have to to, to put your uh, yourself in their place, like in their shoes. Uh, for instance, I would, 
uh, it's true. I'm. I wouldn't be a community manager if I if it, it wasn't true like because secrecy was I am a gamer. Design. So when I pay for something, I expect something in return. Uh, so that's the same for our community. So I understand the way they think, but also I'm the able to give them our uh, our side of the story, and that's where in which uh, the frustration sometimes becomes more of an understanding of the nice. situation for both parties. Well, I would I would hope that they were okay with the two-year wait because some games are worth waiting for, and I think Kona is as well. How do you feel about how the game's been received in its first two months? Uh, right now, now uh, we feel uh, really good about it. Uh, on Steam, uh, we have, like uh, I think it's 90% right now of uh, approval rate. 92% uh, if we count the Steam activation from uh, Humble Store or Steam, uh, our Kickstarter campaigns that didn't buy it on Steam because they already paid for the game and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, it was really well received. And on the game is available for Xbox One and PS4 as well. And did, are you able to get any feedback on those since they don't really have as much of a community as Steam does? Uh, I get. I get I think I went to uh, check on Xbox like uh, the beginning of this week and uh, it, we have a really uh, good rating. Uh, on PS4 I'm not sure, I think it's like four, near four stars out of five. So uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, it's pretty much well received from uh, every platform. Yeah. Excellent, well congratulations. It's not every game that does that, even if it is Kickstarter, not all games live up to their expectations. It sounds like Kona has exceeded them, so well done. Yeah, thank you. Can you remind our listeners where to find Kona online? Uh, yeah, uh, Kona is available on uh, Steam on uh, good old games, uh, GOG.com. Uh, you can also buy it uh, through Humble Store. Uh, and there are several uh, websites, uh, like uh, I think it's Game Rockets. Uh, they are more popular in Europe. So basically, if you want to buy directly on the store, it's, it would be Steam and good old games, and also PS4, Xbox One. And if we want to find Parable or yourself on social media, where would that be? Uh, it's at Parable, P-A-R-A-B-O-L-E, uh, on Facebook, Twitter. And for the game itself, it's at Kona Game, K-O-N-A-G-A-M-E, both on uh, Facebook and Twitter too. Uh, myself is uh, Jean-Francois Fizet, but I manage both pages. So if you have a message directly for me, Jeff, uh, just uh, write uh, this message is intended to Jeff, and I will read it and answer as soon as possible. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the interview. Ooh.